race two, day two. I missed the first race because I left my phone back at the dock. Back in there. And so I don't really know anything other than when you sail in swells, the swells are a little bigger today and it's lighter wind, uh, it's going to make the fleet spread out a lot because uh, the apparent wind is shifting all over the place. Um, and the less experienced teams don't have experience, it feels odd to them. So there's a 8914's really good sailor. He's at the pin. So that one thing is you can't start at the opposite end of the best sailors. You have to know who the best sailors are. It is a very docile Perry fleet. Usually we have a lot more general recalls. It's just a very, if you notice, we have 33 teams or something. And I don't think any of the videos you've heard a kid yell at each other. The remarkable thing is, is almost all of these kids from all the different yacht clubs are friends, actually. And there's nobody who's completely stressing out and yelling and getting upset. It's really remarkable. It's a great social experiment. Like, a certain percentage of people just help at some point, and it just doesn't happen in these good fleets. The better the sailors, the quieter it is. This is the Borellis right here. Okay, here's Harrison right here. I don't know how anybody did in the first race, but again, the swells are difficult today on starboard tack and on port tack. The swells are moving towards Coronado's Beach, so the swells are moving from our left to right at four knots, maybe, I'm just guessing. And every single time you get to the top of one of those swells, you're getting launched towards Coronado, away from the windward mark, pretty much at the speed of that swell. So you are getting an apparent wind header, and you're getting an apparent wind decrease, so you're getting both bad. Okay, so this is race two. And uh, here we go. The biggest thing to do well in these regattas, because the, the competition is good, is speed test and practice and race in the ocean against each other and push each other and lift each other up. Midwinter's West. I don't know if that's the Billy Bennett Memorial, but Billy Bennett loved the swells, dude. One of the best spinnaker trimmers in the Etchell fleet for years. And uh, the boats to the left here look like they are pointed almost straight at the mark. The mark is lined up with that sailboat that's at Point Loma up there, that cruiser just to the left of it now. If you're a crew and the skipper says, where's the mark? Oh, I'm wrong. Uh, the mark is near the power boat. There we go. I was totally wrong. We'll see what happens. Anton's here, third from the left on this part. He's ahead of everybody over here. So the leaders came out, this is pretty even size, probably the right, maybe a little better. There's Anton ducking second or third place, fourth place something. And you know you're ahead of everybody over here. See the different rakes. And they're massively forward. That yeah, that's got five. So first and second. You can see they're pretty much absolutely flat. And I still, you know, just that tiniest bit of lured 
heel just to make sure that when you get at the top of the swell, the boat doesn't heel to windward. So pretty much perfectly flat, sitting forward until the bow's in the water. That may be Harrison and Furs, Red. Yeah, I think that's Harrison and Furs. And the mark is right here. Well, you, when you speed up, the boat's going to feel good. When you slow down, the jib's going to luff because of the swell, and it's going to feel horrible. You try to go up a swell when you tack. That was a perfect time tack. That was really good. So I think it's a little bit of a righty. I think you're almost going to be laying the lured marks anyway. Seems like we're on board tack for a long, long time, quite a long time. Upwind. Very good set. <clears throat> and then you try not to mess with anybody. You just try to race these guys. And don't worry if you lose one boat or something. Just try to point at the mark. So what we do now is look down there. There's the mark. Uh, starboard is marginally closer to the gate. So Harrison stayed a little extra high, let that other guy go way low. And now he's soaked down. So I'd say starboard's closer to the mark by a little bit. little high on the tack or just almost lined up perfectly on the corners. No higher on the pull than that. That's almost, you know, that's good for the puffs. It's like, that's good. If the spinnaker's easy to fly, pull high. If it's hard to fly, pull a little lower. Okay, we'll see what happens here. Harrison jived out. I'm sure he feels under attack. <laughs> I think port tack is harder than starboard tack right now. Let's look at the pole on red, white, blue kite. I don't know if you can see a difference in the red, white, and blue kite and everybody else. But hers is just floating out there, dude. Higher. Higher than anybody. Higher than that. Look at that thing. Just. Oh, look at this. Let's check this out, dude. In the Perry series, less than one year. Look at this. They got a, they got a clear wind here. They got a little puff coming. Let's see how their jibes are. wins. The swells mess with your jibes. Who knows what the timing is on it. Jibes take so long that you're going through two swells, so there's no real plan that works with the apparent wind. Wow, I'm impressed here. I think this guy, these guys gained a little here. Okay, so what do we have? Two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. These guys are 13, 14, 14th and 15th. They did not get wind, that was the bummer. They should be at an advantage right now. The other boats are having to soak low. These guys should be able to reach into the mark. Let's 
so they should be at an advantage. They don't have to do any more jives. They can just come reaching in. We'll see. Now, when it's light wind, you got to carry this spinnaker to the very end, man. You got to, all these boats start rafting up and slowing down, and you can be going twice as fast as them and get back close into the top 10. So keep the thing full. You, you don't really want to reach too much, but you got to reach just a little just to get the thing going. Ooh. That's all right. Rounding 13th and 15th, 13th and 14th. Again, watch the swells. You're gonna see the mass go heel, 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 and then flat, 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 and then heel, 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 and that's just the swells. And you've got to be able to uh, not oversteer and chase your tail too much. You could say painfully light, and it's just coming back up. These guys are just getting in the wind, but painfully light, just coming back up wind and swells. That's why you're seeing the spread in the fleet, is that it really messes with the sails. You have to have a lot of practice in this stuff to get good at it. Build your confidence through practice. And then, you know, it can be little things. These guys in the lead just know where the wind sheet should be upwind, how to change it, where the lure sheet should be, where the traveler should be, what the mainsail lead should be. So they, uh, just through experience, they just know. They have confidence in their setting, in their sail trip. And, and a lot of these boats don't, you know, you're not out here in the ocean and swells, you're sailing inside a bay somewhere with gusty flat water, gusty winds and flat water, puffs and lulls back to back to back. Like Harrison stayed, made, oh, that looks like Anton and Ford, Harrison and Biff. You're just gonna see really good spinnaker trimmers. Like this one is just spinnakers flying high. These guys have their pull a little lower, maybe, but who cares? And again, we talked this morning about the crew hiking as the stern lifts. You're at an angle to the swell right now. So as the stern lifts you, it heads the boat up. Holes are at about 45 degrees. There, oh, they just pulled it back right there. Yep, she pumps it a little. Let's it back forward a little. These guys train a lot. All three of these teams top, top five in the country. Definitely top eight in the country. Every regatta they get. East Coast Midwinters, one hole. And again, they're older, right? They're they're 16, 17 year olds. Or two 17 year olds. Whereas our team, oh good, this is Kevin right here. Um, oh, this is Harris. And uh, you know, like these guys are 13. should do better in the lighter wind. We're small. Most of our teams are small. It's a very weight-oriented boat. And if you're not the right weight, you gotta practice in your, if you're light, you gotta practice in heavy air a lot. And if you're heavy, you gotta practice in light air also a lot. You gotta get good at your weaknesses because weight makes a huge difference. This 
Spinnaker's getting hard to fly here on this port tack. You might need to drop the pole a little. Oh, port tack is hard. with the red, white, and blue boat. So as soon as they jive, they're gonna get jived on. And so she should jive. May, uh, you just have to wait. Maybe a little fake jive, like make it look like you're gonna jive. <laughs> Try to get them to jive and then go a little further. First, second, third, fourth is Kevin, fifth is Harrison. And looks like Anton might move into sixth here. Paul's not lucky here. Pulled the guy a little too early. There you go. Reach. You have to. As soon as the pull's cut, you gotta pull the right side sheet. If you're reaching. Like if you're dead down wind, it might not work. There it goes. See where it is now? She should have had it. Like that. Yep. You pull the guy back into the jive. Then you release it a little so they can get the pull off the mask easier. And then right after the pull is off, you pull it again. And you come out on a little bit of a reach. Wow, you are flying. So what do we got? One, two, three, four. Here's Harrison, fifth, six, seven for Anton. Oh boy, he's almost overlapped here. Ready for the last race, got a little fog bank out there that's not rolling through. Usually a fog bank rolling through will shift the wind hard left. Uh, they set the starting line for about a 230 wind, but the wind, my head to wind was 210, 215. So I gotta think the pin is favored a little bit. Here's Kevin and Holland again, 9307. Never really want to sail with too loose a luff on the jib. It makes the draft go too far aft. But you don't want it too tight either. But just not too big a wrinkles in the luff of a 420 sail. Because you'll see the leading edge gets really flat. Okay, here we go. Coming up on one minute last race. The line sight is the person inside the boat there calling the pin in. So you should be looking at them. Looking up wind right now, it's hard to tell anything. It looks like there's enough wind. I think it looks windier there, left of the mark. My angle could be weird. You know, it could be just as much wind over there, but you're just at a different angle. Now, this guy's making the pin easy in 8228, so I don't think the pin is that favored, actually. So they were calling the time down on the Bessemer to the Bessemer uh, on a private, on a separate radio channel. Wow, that was amazing. I think they just called her. I think they just called her. 
Here's Anton right here, third of the way. Four, five knots. Bucking the current a little. Big swells. There's the Borelli's 9306 right in there. Looks like they're going to weasel their way through there. Right next to Noah. 8914, one of the top three boats in the regatta. There they go. Good job. Get out of there. Race two, first win, uh, race three, first windward mark. You try to steer up the face as you start the tack. Up the face of the swell, just to get head to wind while you're going over the swell. Their spinnaker work is impeccable. Kevin is a low 9307, trying to pounce here. Guys reaching up, looks like he's gonna be fine. And port tack looks slow. And you're having to play the guy. Guy forward as you surge. See her? If she surges, he eases it. And then she'll slowly pull it back if she gets a chance. Swells were more square to the course today. So yesterday, starboard was more into the swells, port was cross swell. Today, both are a little bit cross swell. So it's not as hard to sail today. So Kevin's in second right now. 8228 was over at that start. Kevin's second. Third, fourth. Here's uh, Harrison in fifth. Harrison moved up a lot today. If he can stay in fifth here, he's moving up a lot. Race three, last windward. Kevin and Holland. Oh boy. They missed that buoy. No better not to uh, hit a mark and not do a penalty turn. So they didn't hit it. And uh, Anton came in hard. Actually, was trapping in that race. Coming in at third.
really good. Really, really good. Jib out, sitting forward. The tack is higher than the clue a little, which I, get, I think is okay. You can't see the clue right now. This one looks good. Tack a little higher than the clue. Anytime the spinnaker is easier to fly. Yeah, there we go. Easy third. 